All right, what I'm gonna do today is change the brakes on this Ford Expedition. Uh, basically, um, any vehicle that has uh, disc brakes, this will apply to almost all the Ford vehicles are the same. Um, and then, like this also works on others with disc brakes. All right, the first thing you're gonna need is a good jack. I got this one at O'Reilly's or whatever. I think I paid 170 bucks for it. Um, also get you some uh, wheel chocks. You can get these on Harbor Freight. Uh, they're like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something, but get a good tool kit. Uh, I've got this one at Harbor Freight as well. I have better tools, but I like this one so I can just take it outside. It's got everything you need to do just about anything. It's the mechanics tool set on sale with a coupon. thing. you can get them probably for around $150. Okay. I like to use these wrenches here as well because it allows you to um, basically ratchet. So this one here has a swivel head, and so it's handy sometimes. It works in situations where a socket doesn't. You're going to want jack stands. You can get these at um, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any auto parts store. Uh, but make sure that they're capable of carrying enough the weight of your vehicle. I think these are um, rated for around 6,000 pounds a piece. You're going to need a C-clamp similar to this one here. Uh, basically, that'll be used to compress the caliper when you get it off so that you can get the, um, so you can take it off. Uh, this here, this is a uh, wrench. This will be useful for breaking the bolts on your, um, on your tire. Another thing I didn't mention is I have this little shop cart. It helps anytime you're working on a vehicle because you can um, basically, um, you have a place to stash the parts you take off. I'm gonna use this little container here to put all my bolts in so that I know where they're at at the end of this. Also, it helps to have a little stand for your tools. Uh, so you could just kind of flip this open and work. Another thing that helps is to have an assistant that is able to help you do the squirrely parts of the job that need more than one hand. Okay, you're gonna put this chalk underneath the back of your tire. It's and so we're gonna block off both tires. I'm gonna do the fronts first, and when I get done with those, I'm gonna do the back. I'll take these chocks and put them in the front when I'm uh, working on the back side. Make sure you get them far under there and give them a good kick to make sure they're underneath. Also, you want to be on a fairly flat surface. Uh, I'm on a little bit of incline. I'm comfortable with this and I've worked here before. But make sure you're not on a hill or around any kind of thing where your car could wind up, you know, rolling off on it while you have the, uh, while you have the car up in the air. Okay, before you jack your car up, you're gonna loosen these nuts. Just make them loose. Uh, you wanna just break them loose because once your car's up in the air, you really don't wanna be jerking around these bolts. So you want them kinda loose so you can just pull them out by hand or with a uh, ratchet. Okay, this is a locking, a lug lock thing, whatever came with my rims. Basically, you can see this is not like a hex pattern. They do that so people can't steal your rims. Anyway, if you got that, you're gonna need one of these. Take this jack, push it under the car, and uh, lift the vehicle up. Uh, there'll be like a prescribed interface point on in your owner's manual that shows you where to put the jack. Not every piece of structure underneath your vehicle has low carry, cap carrying capability enough to lift your vehicle. So make sure you put it somewhere that's structurally stable. If they don't provide or prescribe some kind of uh, jack feature or location where the, the jack needs to interface, uh, basically, make sure you find like a big piece of structural steel that's attached to your frame. Okay, you can see that little arrow that they've uh, probably water jetted into that frame there. They're telling you that's where you put your jack. I've seen also they put little, two little pins or some kind of other feature that locates where the jack goes, but just go read your manual and figure out where, where to do it. Okay, uh, you can see I got the jack plant staying in place. Um, for this, I'm really not going to have the weight on the jack stand, but I got it clicked up as high as I could and I got it to engage. This lever here will show you that it's engaged and you want to lay all the weight down on the jack stand. And just so you know that it's seated, you want to make sure that it's on the ground, it's not moving around. And then you want to take some of the weight off it with this jack and just leave the jack there as long as you could do all this without it getting in your way. Like you don't want to jack the car up super high so that you have a lot of clearance, but you got to get enough clearance so you get that tire off. If you jack it up too high, it'll make it difficult to put the tire back on later. And so, um, I just like a few inches, maybe that's about, I want to say around two inches. Okay, I broke these nuts before I jacked everything up just so I don't have to use a lot of force to get them off. This tire will rotate now that it's in the air. And so, like I said, it makes it really difficult to break that when you're when you have the car up 
but if you break the nuts before you lift it up, then you could just go ahead and back them out now that the car's safely lifted and on the jack stand. I'm gonna take this tire off, when I pull it off, I'm gonna try to lift up on it so I'm not in at risk of damaging the threads when I pull it out. I mean, these are really heavy, so we're gonna roll this over here. And then I'm just gonna give it a flip and it'll wind up. Another one I, thing I wanted to say before you get started doing this is make sure your car has been uh, cooled down enough before you drive it. If you just went on a long drive and then work on these, everything's gonna be super hot from you pounding on the brakes. So just keep that in mind. Okay, this is my uh, rotors here. Your This is the caliper. This is the um, stationary portion of the caliper that gets bolted to the, to the uh, hub. Um, these little pins here help hold everything together. And so, so you can see what's going on here. These brakes are like extremely worn. You can see how deep that is. These are ready to go. Um, they're not squeaking yet, but my uh, wife's telling me that the pedal's a little squishy. So another thing I want to note, there's some fasteners back here you're going to have to be able to get at. Okay, we're going to look back here. So my uh, calipers are held on with this fastener. This one I got my finger on right now. And then there's another one down here. It's the same size, right back there. And so we're gonna use a, the right size socket. I believe these are three quarter inch. You may need some kind of extension or something to get you out of this little pocket. Okay, I got this out. Um, I got the other one out, it's right there. And so you notice there's um, blue stuff on here. Basically what that was is Loctite. Um, I was the one that took these off last time and so When you put these back on don't crank them down to the point that you re it requires an impact wrench or some kind of big breaker bar to get them out You want to make sure they're good and tight um, Yeah, so if they get stuck on the way out uh, You may need a breaker bar you may need um, some kind of penetrant oil to help get things uh, loosened up another thing in the extreme situation is you can heat the bolts up with like a benzomatic torch or something like that and what that'll do really what you want to do is heat the area around the bolt and what it does is it expands that metal and it'll help break the connection between the bolt and the uh the hole also if you have any kind of loctite or crud on the threads it'll activate the grease or whatever it is and um It'll make it so you can get it out. So one of the things we're looking for here is any kind of cross threading or damaged threads. If you damage anything, go to the hardware store and get a new one. Don't reassemble everything because next time you mess with it, you may not get it back off. All right, so I'm gonna pull this caliper off now. It should just slide out. You may need to do a little force. So that came pretty easy. So you can see your brakes inside of there. I'm gonna set this up here so I can work on it. But one of the things you'd want to be careful of is don't break the brake line unless you're trying to bleed your brakes. That's gonna be a different video. I'm not gonna do it right now. And then don't put any kind of pressure on this line. Like don't hang the caliper from the brake line because it'll break and then you'll be up, up a creek. Okay, I just had some trouble getting this uh, disc off. I'll demonstrate it on the other um, disc on the other side. But basically there's a threaded hole just happened to be on this one so I stuck this bolt in and turned it and it pushed off the backside and pushed the rotor off I smacked it with a hammer several times was not able to get it off so um, if you have this little feature on your disc rotor it's pretty good okay I'm gonna take this little cap off there's another one back here use my nine millimeter socket and go up in here and take the caliper pins out Okay, I got this assembly put back together. Um, I put one of my caliper pins already in, but I was just gonna show. Um, this is uh, silicone brake grease that Ford uses. Um, I'd recommend staying with whatever they use on the OEM. You can also get um, brake grease at the, um, count at the counter at any auto parts store. So about the only difficult thing with putting all this stuff together is um, this, these caliper sockets, I want to show you this. So this one here is a nine millimeter socket. Let me see if I can show you the size. Good luck finding a nine millimeter socket. I mean, 
I, I think I bought this one in Napa, but it's an odd size and um, it's just not in generally used for whatever reason. And so uh, I had to hunt and hunt to look for it. Anyway, shame on you, Ford. You should have just put a 10 in there or an 8 or whatever the next size is. But yeah, so I think I paid like 20 bucks for this one. And uh, it pissed me off the first time. And also when I just had to go dig through all my tools to look for it, pissed me off a second time so okay these calipers uh they're probably seated at some kind of wherever the last comfortable position was for them so uh, probably pretty close to um hugging your your um your disc and so they're probably far pretty far out and when you put these new discs on here it's they're not going to fit back on so what you have to do is compress these down you want to push them both at like an equal rate and get them so that one's not like higher than the other so what i'm going to do i'm going to stick this piece of wood in here it's fairly flat and i'm going to use this c-clamp to compress those uh, now what, what you want to do is you want to pop the reservoir on your brake fluid and i don't know if that works but supposedly it makes it so that um this non compressible fluid will go back up in the line into the reservoir and allow these cylinders to com be compressed. So you want to compress them to the extent possible. You don't want them to get them like recessed back into the, the caliper casting, but um, you just kind of want to get them as flush as you can. Okay, this is what I'm talking about right here. Now I'm going to turn this. I'm going to turn it slow. I'm not going to try to make this very dynamic. You just want it to slowly compress it. <laughs> This is what it looks like now. There are these uh, cylinders are pushed up to the extent possible. You might be able to get them a little better than that, but I think that's good. I'm gonna take these brake pads and stick them in here. They just these little clips go right up in there. You may have to push on a little bit. I'm gonna have to go off camera to do it. Okay, so the outside one it basically gets loaded in. This little clicker goes in that recess. This goes here. And then I'm gonna set this down in there. You kind of have to sweep it in and line up the caliper hole on both of these, this part here, and then this part right here on this uh, casting. Okay, this fits on here like this. And basically what I'm gonna have to do is just kind of mash it down. And then I'm gonna use a screwdriver too to help get this little twanger. Okay, so this is what it looks like installed. Basically I put, I set this portion here and this portion on these two and then I just push down on this and got this in alignment with the, those two holes. All right, I just cleaned this with denatured alcohol. You could use acetone or some other kind of solvent. I'm just trying to get the grease off it to the extent possible. And I'm going to give a little blast of paint just so it looks a little better. And it probably won't hold up very good, but just look it's just lipstick all right when you put these in uh, the lugs you're basically going to work off of diametrically opposed pairs so you do like the top one then the bottom one then that one then that one then that one then that one and then at the end go all the way around like I said you're not gonna be able to torque it down because the wheel your wheel is gonna move but once you uh, get it as tight as you can drop the car down and then do like a final torque. You don't have to tighten these till the veins pop out of your head. Matter of fact, if you do that, you're gonna make it so it's not gonna come back off. Okay, I got it all put together. Um, once you sit it back down on the ground, you're gonna tighten it up in, again in diametrically opposed pairs. Uh, get it pretty tight. You don't have to like shoot veins out again, but um, you know, pretty tight. Uh, one of the things I didn't talk about is if you get have trouble getting the rotors off Sometimes there's a little fastener inside the rotor to pull it off in the back. We didn't have that and so there wasn't Threads on this rotor to get it off. So what you do is you take like a 12 pound hammer and You smack it right on the flat face in between the lugs Like and just hit it like up here in between these two lugs and then down there and then just keep going around Give it a smack pretty good and then it'll come off. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.